if you continue your product eventually get better and you can get it to where you want it to be at because i remember when i first started recording back in uh in high school i used to make my beats and i used to rap but I didn't know no producers back then, so I had to make my own beats. I'm telling you, like, I really wanted to rap. So I used to bang on the table and record myself on the beat. Then I would rap over that, and it sounded terrible. <laughs> but, I had to, but, you, but you had to start somewhere. And eventually, I just kept putting that out, and producers were like, oh, this is tight. You want to rap on my beat? And you start building relationships like that. Oh, no. I don't get it. It's okay. You get it. <laughs> I was like, yes, Lord, come on with the cancellations. <laughs> Oof, we going in it, now I'm just kidding. No, I don't know if you know this, I'm black. Uh, am I good? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> he's with the best of them, and he's oh, one of my favorite men. <laughs> <I've ever signed. laughs> that that intro sounds like much more than who I actually am. <laughs> My guest of honor uses words to paint vivid pictures of truth that evokes emotion and instills hope. He's an artist and a poet from Dallas, Texas. He has performed on national national level with the Dallas Poetry Slam team, and he's a rapper who has been releasing music since 2009. He has performed at churches, colleges, parties, and clubs across the country. And he has also written and recorded jingles for nationally syndicated radio shows and audio books. He's a God-fearing rapper, poet, husband, father, son, brother, uncle, nephew, and cousin, looking to make the world better, one bar at a time. He's a man of integrity on a mission to change the game on his own terms, and his creativity is unmatched. Let's just say he's the new level of lit. Today, my guest of honor is Ed mm. MC. <laughs> hey, I like hey. that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing great. Good, good. How are you, Coach K? I'm doing good. Just I'm blessed. So I'm happy to still be here. <laughs> I hear you. Yes. That's a fact. Yes. Speaking of that, how has quarantine been going for you? <laughs> All right. It's been like, interesting. Huh? <laughs> it's crazy because I'm like a I'm a people person. Like I love to be around people. Yeah. But I'm so good by myself. Like I really like being alone sometimes. So it's been <laughs> great. Like I really I think I've got a lot more accomplishments being so confined in the house. Yeah. I do miss being around people, but I think it's been pretty good for me. Like, it's, I've been very productive. So, productivity has definitely gone through the roof since quarantine. I was saying, just try to be on the positive side. Yeah, that's definitely helped me just lock in more. When you can't go nowhere, you ain't got much to do, but be productive. Yeah, you and I are, are very similar because I always describe myself as an introvert with extrovert tendencies. So, Ooh, <laughs> like, real talk, that's really what I am. I can mm -hmm. be very social, I love people, but I am definitely a true cancer who likes to be at home, too, so. See, I'm a Capricorn. I don't know what that means, but I like being at the house, for sure. <laughs> home bodies. <laughs> yes. We like, we like the crib. Um, yeah. <laughs> what, what would you say is your biggest takeaway from 2020, though? Nothing's promised. Um, time is sacred. The little things are so important. You uh, you miss things when you don't have them no more. Like just seeing people smile, that's so crazy. Like I haven't seen a person like really smile in so long. Like mm -hmm. I'll be in a store with a mask on. People probably think I'm mad at them, but I'll be just smiling. You, you can't tell what's going on with a person. Yeah. Just the simple things. You, you take everything for granted until you don't have it. Just whoever thought that we would actually live in these times. It's crazy. It seems like something from a movie or we would read in a book, but the kids are going to read about these times and we actually living through this. It's, yeah. it's, yeah, it's something that we are going to remember forever. It's historical. That's a fact. Definitely historical. I think it's interesting too that you mentioned you can't see the smiles, but what 2020 has really forced us to do is like look inward. And it's mm -hmm. interesting how we have to look at people in their eyes now. Ooh, that's a word i that never thought about true. that until recently yes. we have to look at them in their eyes now and be like to get the expression that's so true because you take that yeah I'm, that's the only place you can look now <laughs> like you gotta mm -hmm. look it with the eyes yeah the windows to the soul that's what we want to <laughs> you right about that yeah um tell us a little bit about your background we know you from d-town so tell us a little bit yeah, about yeah everything <laughs> uh, so i am a dallas baby but spent a lot of my time in like the north dallas carrollton addison area that's where i went to school at and i went to college at unt 
ended up moving back into the Carrollton area. That's where I'm at now. And like you said, I've been performing forever. So that started the story. Legend has it that I was rapping before I could talk. My uh, family members say I used to like mumble words and rhythms before I could actually like formulate words. Wow. I've actually, yeah. So it's been going on for a while. And I probably started performing at the age of seven. I actually used to drag my sister along with me to perform all the time. So I would write all the songs and have her singing the hooks. We started off at uh, our local church. Then they got us to, we used to go to African Methodist Episcopal Church. Uh, then they had us perform at so many other places. Like, and it's just kind of catapulted since then. Like, I always got the same kind of mindset. Like, kind of keep the God-fearing uh, idea and everything that I do. Want to be a positive person. And it's just translated into me forming my own lane, you know? Yeah. It's definitely needed because, look, I feel like we have too many copies. You know, it's, we got a lot of copies out here. So it's always good to be original and like an individual. So that's what I love so much about you because it's always original. You can tell that you put the work in. Man, I appreciate that because I definitely do. I want to be unique. So just being myself and trying not to fit in, but understanding that it's okay to stand out. Like mm -hmm. you you don't want to be just like everybody else. But I mean, sometimes when you're a kid, you go through that. You like struggle with that. You want to fit in. But as you get older, you know that it's unique and that's how you stand out. Everybody's got their own individuality and that's what makes you you. And then when you embrace that, it's just so much better. It unlocks the creativity. Yes, absolutely. It definitely does. I think it'll be good for you to tell them about your college journey real quick because that's a, a definition of individuality and doing your own thing on your own path. So tell us about that real quick. <laughs> So um it's a pretty popular kid in high school. I was like the probably the most popular person. I was the uh homecoming king, the prom king, the class favorite. These are like all words from a song that I got. So when I <laughs> left that school, I went to college by myself. So like I none of my friends actually translated with me through uh to college. So I started all over there. Still just kind of like blossomed again, became pretty popular on campus and met a lot of people, just connected. I'm like really a people person. I like talking to people and being around people and then expressing myself like that. And I connected with some people um, who started Poetic Justice back then. So it was really early. We would have like maybe five people or something. We used to perform down by the rocks at UNT. Wow. Just be cold, just be <laughs> spitting like all night and wake up and have to go back to class <laughs> the next <laughs> night. Yeah. And Poetic Justice became so big. I'm telling you, we started off with like five people. But then there's nights where there's like, we moved to a gazebo on campus, which is outside. People would be like walking by. And then they just, crowds just start coming. And like, it became a really big thing. And it's still going today, which I'm so proud of, because that was a long time ago. Wow. Started college in 2007. So where are we in now? Ooh, 2021. Wow. Lord. And they still... I still push it now, so that's a beautiful thing. But during college, I was still like working and it just became a struggle for me to do the school thing and work going back and forth with that. And my heart wasn't really being in the school anyway. Cause when I was sitting in class, like it was <laughs> impossible for me to focus. I had so much going on in my head. I couldn't take notes because they would just start turning in the lyrics. <laughs> yeah. Like I would just be writing something completely different, it had nothing to do with what they were talking about. I was like, this is it for me. Ended up just going and start working full time and been working full time since then. But now I just do my music the way I want to, when I want to. And it's, it's so freeing. Like, yeah, I'm very happy with being able to do that. Create how you want to create. Yeah, I, I love that you made the decision for yourself because a lot of people would have consulted their parents. And if the answer was different from them, they would still go with the parent. And like that. Mm. To me, I feel like kids need to know that as an adult, you have to make an adult decision That's and right. be okay with the consequences, you know? But That's a word. I'm grateful that you you did that because you, who would have known? Like, you probably would still be it up there trying to figure out something because you weren't in it, you know? <laughs> yes, that's, that's <laughs> so true. But I was blessed with a situation where my mom was pretty confident in me. So she... I didn't have a, a very contradicted parent. Like if I told her I, I wanted to do something, she's always been supportive of me. So that is a beautiful thing. I know everybody doesn't have that situation where they do have that back and forth. 
Yeah. But I was um, the only male in my family for a long time. And my mom has a certain level of respect for me. So she sees the way I, I move. So if I put my mind to something, I'm going to do it. But if my heart ain't in it, then I just can't be in it. So That's a word. So, <laughs> <laughs> so tell me uh, about your relationship with music. Like, when did you like really feel like you knew that it was your calling? Like, can you remember the time when you just decided that? It's gonna be forever. Like, I've always wanted to do music. Like the stories they have about me, and mom, but it makes so much sense because music just flows in me. It's the most natural thing I do. Like. That is the one thing I've always wanted to do. I remember when I was little, like in uh, one of my elementary schools, I don't know, I have random memories. Like you only can remember <laughs> parts of things. It's so yeah. weird. Like, I remember the teacher asking me what I wanted to be. I was like, a rapper and a daddy. Oh, <laughs> you're doing both. Yes, man, I'm living the dreams. That's crazy, right? That is crazy. I I've always wanted to ask someone who's like in love with music, like, do you decode music in a different way? Like, do you see it? Like, is it, like, when you hear music, can you, like, visually see it? Sometimes. Like, it's, like, colors, but I more so feel it. Like, I, like, people feel the beat, but I feel words. Like, um, so, like, I listen to songs very different than people. I just yeah. down to them, like, you like that? <laughs> <laughs> but depending on where I'm at, I'm, I, like, I like to rock, too, but I like to listen a lot of times. That's my favorite thing to do is just listen, because the words are so important to me. I think it breathes life in the situations. It helps people through things. Sometimes the music does as well. Sometimes the words that are on top of the music doesn't really match what the feel is. So At I all. do see that. Yes. <laughs> yes, you, you got it. I see that in like colors like and the when the lyrics and the beat match perfect, they paint the best picture to me. Yeah. Absolutely. It's crazy that you, you ask me how I see that, which is something I get asked a lot because I don't write words for my raps. Like I do it all in my head. So I can like see the words like that. I stopped doing that like writing a long time ago. I used to um, <laughs> have this bootleg car back in uh, in my high school days, a little hatchback, and it had a really nice radio in it. That was the only thing nice about the car. <laughs> Somebody broke in, <laughs> they broke in and stole that radio. So I used to just like freestyle everywhere I went. I just used to rap the whole ride. And then it just right. started sticking with me. By the time I got to the studio, I had the whole song in my head. I was like, oh, I could do this. So from then on, I hadn't wrote a word. I just been rapping. Oh. Look, I think it needs to be a rule that when you become an artist, the first three years, you cannot sample anything. Because, <laughs> real talk, this needs to be you a gonna rule. You're going to hurt a lot of feelings. You're going to hurt a lot of feelings. Because just like you just said, people hear the beat and they instantly, like, bop into it, but they're not listening to the lyrics. I'm like, y'all cheating. Because, like, if you use a sample from a song we're familiar with, of course, we're going to be like, oh, I like that song. That's why those samples are so expensive. <laughs> yeah. I feel like you should not be able to do it for like the first three years. Let us know who you are. You got to pay some dues first. <laughs> yeah. I like it. I can, rock, I can rock with that. Yeah. So you won't be getting uh, people by default. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's my jam and that's really not your jam, but now it is your jam. Because <laughs> there's a lot of music out there that, that gets us real quick because we hear that familiar beat, that 90s influence. You'd be mm. like, ooh. Yeah. Sometimes I go back and just be listening to old songs and be like, I didn't even know that was a sample. Yeah. Uh, nah. And when you work with younger kids, they be like, they stole that song from them. I'm like, hold <laughs> on. What you're not going to do is disrespect the Aussie brothers. Uh, they were who? here first. Like, <laughs> right. like, like the, they say who? Yeah. And I show them uh, and they be like, oh, okay. <laughs> I guess they did have it first. <laughs> they had it first because they old. So you know they was here first. <laughs> um, Everybody old. Yes. Tell me a little bit about the cost of the dream. Like, it, this is an expensive dream for you, huh? Or, oh, that's that a fact. A lot of investment. So how do you maneuver that? So you got to do research on research. That's my always my first advice. Do research on research because I had bought some faulty things that I didn't even need before. Buying microphones and audio boxes and headphones and laptops and cameras. You got to make investment in yourself. Like, if that's really what you want to do, you want to be about it, you got to invest in yourself. But sometimes... You're going to make the wrong investment. Mm -hmm. And that's just, that's a part of the journey, though. Yeah. Pack that L up, keep moving. You learn from, from that. You just do research on research, I'm telling you. And then if you continue, your product eventually get better and you can get it to where you want it to be at. Because I remember when I first started recording back in, uh, in high school, I used to make my beats and I used to rap. But 
I didn't know no producers back then, so I had to make my own beats. I'm saying, you know, like, I really wanted to rap, so I used to bang on the table and record myself on the beat. And then I would rap over that, and it sounded terrible. <laughs> but, I had to, but, you, but you had to start somewhere. And eventually, I just kept putting that out, and producers were like, oh, this is tight. You want to rap on my beat? And you start building relationships like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy how connected, like, the music industry is. And, like, I'm going to ask you this question first, and then I'm going to get to that point. Like, if, okay. you could build, if you could build a dream team of producers, like, who would be on that team? Ooh, that is an excellent question. But I know we were just talking about samples, but Kanye is definitely one of my favorite producers just because of that soul sound. You know, oh, I love yeah. that soul. Yeah, he, so, Kanye got it. Look, yeah. Kanye is great. I miss him. I miss Kanye. So, I, I'm, I'm, yeah, I miss that young man too. I'll miss put um, Timberland for the bounce. He got that bounce to it. And then I'm going to take Jay Diller. Yeah. Anybody that can put a, a crying baby in a, in a, a beat <laughs> and that make it work. Nothing to do with the song. Nothing. <laughs> it works it though. Yeah. It just works. That's crazy. That's to creativity me. for real. Yes. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> you give me every time. <laughs> when I first heard that, I was like, Wait, is that a baby? <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I said, turn that up. It's okay. <laughs> but yeah, oh, the dream is always expensive or like there's mm. always investments that have to be made. And so I know that comes with sacrifice as well. So what do you feel like you've had to like put to the side in order to pursue the dream? Well, that's an excellent question. So we talked about like the monetary things, but I would say, um, what it costs even more is time. Like, <laughs> even though I feel like I got a natural gift, this is something that I, I still have to perfect. I craft it. I work on it all the time. So I have to like miss events. I miss like family functions and like parties and stuff just because I'm so locked in. I'm putting the time in, like refining it, working, recording, and recording again and re recording again until it sounds like you want it to sound. So what you really invest is, is definitely going to be, you're going to spend a couple coins, but time, is the most important thing. As good as you want to be, you got to invest in that. No matter what you're looking at, from an athlete, a musician, uh, accountant, you got to spend some time perfecting your craft. You got to learn how to count. You got to learn how to dribble. You got to learn how to how to record. It's it's all going to cost time. It's the Absolutely. most important thing you go you gonna spend your money on is just time. Yeah, and I think a lot of people don't don't even think about that because it's that sweat equity it's like you're gonna have to put that in in order to get to where you're gonna get um you should write a book about that <laughs> i should <laughs> <laughs> i should you need to be called sweat equity look at this right there now look right there now um but <laughs> i think uh it's interesting that you say you have to miss family events and with you being a family man like you have a family now so how are you balancing being a dad, being a husband, being an artist? Like, how do you even maneuver all of that, too? Because some people don't even know where to start when it comes to that. So uh, you got to be intentional. You, you got to know what you want to do and you make time for it. People say, I don't have time for that. No, you just you're not intentional about your time. So I am very intentional about that. Like me and my wife, we have date nights. But every day I spend time with my daughter, like no phone or nothing. I'm down with her just playing whatever she want to do. She be putting stuff on my head. Got me playing with baby dolls, changing diapers. We singing. <laughs> we doing kids, Bob. Whatever she want to do. We just, I take time every day. Just, just whatever she want to do. I'm just down on the floor with her. We playing hide and seek. You just got to be intentional. You got to set time aside for what matters to you. So if you want to work and make money, you got to do that. And then if you want to have time for yourself, you got to set that aside. So you got to be willing to stay up late. You got to, mm -hmm. You just got to be intentional. You got to, I would say, like, um, categorize what's important to you and make sure you have an allotted time for that. Absolutely. Tell me what it's like, um, how how your daughter has changed your life. Ooh, she made me soft. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm more sensitive now. Like, we watching This Is Us and just tears start crawling. All day. Yeah, she made me like, ah. <laughs> Right. It's, are they cutting onions? What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> She's just made me appreciate everything a little bit more. Like just watching her. It's it's so eye opening. She's like a it's like a word. Just the things that she do and how she figures it out. Yeah. Just really appreciate everything a little bit more. Especially yeah. my wife and my mother. Yeah. 
Yeah, you understand a lot of things that you didn't when you were younger, just watching your own child. It's like, it makes a whole lot of sense now. And you can understand things you couldn't before. And now you try to instill that in her and she got to go through that same journey. Like, what are you talking about? And then it makes sense <laughs> to her, yeah. Yes. I, I always refer to your wife as like the ultimate support system because That's right. like, it doesn't even matter like what you're doing. Like she is there. And not only is she there, she's there representing. She's going to be fly. She gonna do whatever she got to do to make sure you good. I love it. And it makes me happy to see. So tell me about her influence on your life as well, because I know she she has done a lot. Oh, yeah. She's definitely made me better. Like, just like you said, that support system is awesome. So I've been blessed in my life to always have, like, Black women just point into me from my mothers, my grandmother, my aunts. And now I have my wife who has taken that to a whole nother level and has just been just really push me for it just like if I'm working on something for somebody else she always reminds me I see you doing that for you for them but don't forget that you need to go in there and do your thing too so she's always on top of me on that yeah it's, and keep me fly too so yeah yeah look <laughs> your wife be fly I'm telling you <laughs> she really do uh, I'm gonna tell her you said that yes tell her she know I love her she's dope to me like right. um what would you say is your why, your overall why for getting up in the morning? Like, what's your why? That is an awesome question. So tell somebody about how good God is. And not necessarily just tell them with words like that. Sometimes I like to just speak by actions. You just be like, what? Why? It's got a little glow to him. I wonder what it is. Yeah. Why? Yeah. So it's to make everything better. So it's probably going to be the answer to some more questions. But the whole no. goal is is to get better. So like me I want to be better every day and I want to help everything be better so that's why if we're not improving then what we're doing if we ain't moving then I keep it moving yeah. the whole goal is to get better everything every, every aspect of life you want to improve a little absolutely. bit every day absolutely do you have a good friend group around you that that exudes what you just said absolutely so I have a really tight group. It's like five of us, all the same age, all married, all have a little kid. Wow, that's yeah. crazy. <laughs> that is very crazy. It seems like after <laughs> it's it seems like it's always five. Like when you get older, the number dwindles down really quickly. Mm. Like um, it's crazy. It always ends up being like a small number, which is very best, small. Yeah, which is best. Um, what would you say are the five non-negotiables when it comes to your friendships? And people you have in your circle so I don't want to be around people who are not consistent I don't want to be around people who are negative so those are probably my top two you said five I, I saw the list but I have to round it down to two so like I just oh, cannot fine. be around negativity or inconsistency that's just fine because look I'm glad that you have two like some people don't have any standards right so that's true it's sad to see it's like you give your time to anyone and that's just not uh, you can't do that you don't want <laughs> get that on you like yeah you don't want to be around negativity it's gonna bring you down it definitely is and, and you will start doing what they do because they they you know rub off on you that's a fact yeah everything rubs off on you no matter every whatever you intaking is gonna be inside of you absolutely you gotta come out some kind of way it, it will come out in the worst way <laughs> what what role does god play in your life uh the lead role <laughs> he is the why and kind of goes back to the last question, but yes, that's how uh, uh, Granny Granny raised me. So I'm very dependent upon God. So I try to follow in those steps. Don't always step the right way, but I always uh, try to repent and go back and uh, learn from that. That's all of us, though. And anyone who says that that's not them, they're not, they're not telling the truth <laughs> because yes. we're we're not perfect at, at all. So not even close. Not even goal close. is to strive to be, even though you're gonna fall short, but just try your best. Like sweet baby Jesus, we need all the grace. <laughs> <I'll> <laughs> Give me it. all the grace. I love it. Yes. <laughs> Jesus be forgiveness. <laughs> Where would you have a, a daughter? So have you seen the movie Soul? Yes, I have seen the movie Soul. Please tell me your take on that movie because I, I really feel like it was a great life lesson in the movie about purpose versus passion. So Ooh. tell me what you think about the movie. I would have to agree with you. That was an excellent movie. First of all, I was not expecting it to be that deep when I saw Soul. At all. <laughs> Man, that is a story for you. Like, 
I've only seen it one time and I definitely want to go back and watch it again. Yeah. And it's so funny that he was a musician because I love music so much. But the person who he, the little soul that was with him who was so lost and was trying to find her, uh, why? Yeah. This, this is a really awesome story. I think that's a, a very inspiring and motivational story. I think it's so clever how they make it for kids, but the adults can get something from it too. Yeah. I always find true. that. I love when they do that. It's like those, um, it's a lot of uh, little kids movies, but they have like jokes that I know the kids all got no idea what it is. <laughs> like, thank you for that. Yeah. Cause I know you got to watch it with your kids. So here you can have it. Right. Pixar yeah. does a great job with it. <laughs> yeah, they have mastered it. They have. I got from it. Like the question is like, do you believe your passion is your purpose? And that was, Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I honestly, I honestly think that your passions, because I feel like you have more than one gift. Your passions are the vehicles you use to deliver your purpose, right? Woo. And I just think that it's interesting, like to compare the two, because some people think their passion is their purpose. Mm. So I wanted to know if you thought that your passion was your purpose. In my situation, I actually do, because <laughs> yeah. I'm so passionate about music, and I do mm-hmm. think my purpose is to spread word through music. Mm-hmm. So for me, it is one and the same, but I definitely understand. I don't think everybody's is the same. Yeah. Some people don't even understand what their purpose is and they think their passion is their purpose. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I wanted to ask. I was like, I need to get somebody else's perspective on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the I got to go watch that movie again. Nah. Yeah. I'm going to watch it again. I can't wait to watch it again because I just love the creativity of how they describe like the lost souls, you know, how they had the dark the dark Mm one I was like the way that they illustrated that was just perfect they they took their time on that one yeah they did in an all-star cast all star (laughs) (laughs) how does Jamie have time to do all this stuff hey he's a Texan that's how (laughs) that's a fact so I see he about to be Mike Tyson I'm so excited about that oh lord he done imitated him enough so man, he imitated Mike Tyson so in so many comedy shows. Like he has <laughs> manifested he did, that. <laughs> he didn't put on a weight like him too. I'm so excited. It's gonna be good. That's gonna be really good. Yeah, yeah. he get it's into gonna, his roles for real. He really does. Like I think it's interesting how our like artists and like actors have a lot of similarities. Like how you have to get into character. Because some people really change or have an mm-hmm. alter ego when they come when it comes to music. Like your Lady Gaga's and your, you know, some people have a whole alter ego. <laughs> it's very similar to being an True. actor or an actress. And that's funny because he's one, he's both of those, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. And we need more music from Jamie. I need Jamie yeah, to come we do. On, come on back yeah. on some more music. Cause I'm that, here first, for it. that first album, I remember going to Sam Goody. And <laughs> these kids don't I know bet. nothing about Sam Goody, you know. I actually had the CD too, yeah. They don't know what a CD is. <laughs> They know. <laughs> no CD. That's crazy. But um, what do you believe creates your self-image? My actions. I think um, the things that I do and the way I do them. My self-image is portrayed as a um, a father, mm-hmm. a husband, and a guy for man. It's all gonna come back to the same thing. I think the things that I move all say the same thing. Like he is intentional. He's uh purposeful. He ain't perfect, but he's trying. That's that's the story for us all. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, you gotta put a little effort in there. <laughs> you do. I mean, without intention, you won't get to anywhere. So you'll just be coasting. You'll just be coasting. Mm. So, um, who is your all-time favorite artist? All-time favorite artist is old Kanye West. <laughs> Them first couple albums, Pat, Pat. I I don't skip nothing. Yeah, yeah. It's a you don't have to skip anything in that on those albums. Nah, that's that's most definitely my favorite artist. And then I loved uh, J College J Cole. I like I still like Cole too, but uh, my favorite is definitely early Kanye and early Cole. Do you remember like where you were when you first heard them? Yes. Uh, so I heard uh, Kanye in the car. Mm-hmm. And I was so random because I heard um, slow jams and I heard through the wire, and I thought it was two different artists. Hmm. And I was like, these both jam. But that's not actually the first time I heard them. There was this kid from Chicago who went to my um my high school and he had like these bootleg CDs. And mm-hmm. the first time I heard All Falls Down, it was a poem. Wow. I was like, this is cold. And that's actually how I started doing poetry. I was like, this is a song, but it's a poem. And I kind of like go back and forth with those. I do a lot of songs that are poems or poems that are songs. 
Mm-hmm. And that's definitely when I started doing poetry is when I heard that and fell in love with the um, Kanye's whole style back then. Do you approach uh, poetry the same way that you approach writing a song? Yeah. Yeah. Just um, meditating on things. So kind of. Sometimes when I do music, I have the song before I have the beat. So I already have what I want to say. I just have these words floating in my head. And I was like, ooh, that would be pretty on that canvas. Sometimes I just get the canvas, which I call the beat. And mm-hmm. I just play it in my head all day. Just don't listen to nothing else. Just the same beat over and over. Because when I tell you I don't write nothing, I'm writing it in my head. So I would say the same line till I add another line. Then I'll be like, mm, I don't like that word. Go back and put another word in that specific line. And mm-hmm. I'll do that for a week. No, just listen to one beat. Wow. Look, just painting it. Yeah. That's such an art. For real, that's a, such an art because everybody can't even like hold that, like the capacity to be able to hold <laughs> that in your brain, to be able to continue I, to build on it. That's amazing. You know, I always thought it was crazy when people used to tell me that Jay-Z never wrote. I was like, that is amazing. How does he do that? And then when they took my radio out <laughs> of my car and I was like, I remember what I said now? I was like, ooh, this is about to be my thing. And <laughs> since then, I have not wrote one word down. That's it's, crazy. It, it makes my music so much better because I was like, if I can't remember, I don't need to be saying it anyway. <laughs> it yeah. wasn't that important. Yeah. That's true. And I think I would think that it would help your creativity more as well because you're not like when you write something, you go back and read it and you tend to change your words based off of like previously thing, previous things you've written. So mm-hmm. I would imagine that it makes your song better because you're really thinking off the fly. And it's like I can be clever without influence. You're right. And when I used to write, I used to feel like I was robotic when I went in there to record the song. Mm-hmm. And now you so much freedom. I got the words in my head. So in that moment, if I come up with another line, I would put that line there and then I could still go on. I, I love the freedom that it gives me to create on the go. So I can <laughs> be writing a song anywhere I'm at and nobody knows because I'm doing it in my head. So it's, it's probably my favorite thing to do is just to make songs in my head. Just think things through. I'm a deep thinker so I just like linger on things until I get it I, mm-hmm. I like things to make sense so I just play it in my head until it does or I'm gonna research it until it does yeah. and if I, it makes sense to me I can I remember it I'll lock it in so like my songs I try to tell like stories because stories are so much easier to remember and they all make sense but like when you just got a bunch of random stuff that don't mean nothing I, it's hard for me to remember those kind of things so I try to be I like to tell stories and paint pictures you definitely do that <laughs> you definitely do that. And I appreciate that. Where do you see the music game going right now? Like, do you, are you happy with what's happening, or do you feel like um, there needs to be more like people mentoring? So, I've always felt the same way. Like, they um, push out what they want to push out. But okay, I take that back. Today, I don't feel like that. So, I feel like back in the day you only had one source to get your music. So if it wasn't on the radio, then you weren't going to be able to hear it. Mm-hmm. Today, they push the same type of music, but now we have opportunities to go and find whatever we want to hear. Mm-hmm. So if you're looking for that, you can go find it, but it's just not pushed to the masses. So that's yeah. the kind of stuff I do where you got to go digging. Like we started to say, you say you want to get more people familiar with me. I appreciate that. Because though we do the type of music you got to go looking for, because that's not, that don't sell like um, sex does. So yeah. the more thoughtful things are harder to sell. So you got to have a niche audience. And once you get that, then you can you can ride that wave. You can be good in your lane. But until yeah. then, it's going to be kind of hard. So I feel the music game is great in general as far as the variety of artists it has. I've always wished that they will push more of that on the radio but or to the yeah. masses. That That's a whole different story. But today, I'm happy to say that there are several artists who give you whatever you want. You just got to go find it. And yeah. it's not even that hard to find these days because they got specific playlists for those type of things. It just still won't be to the masses. Masses it won't be in the forefront, but it's far easier to find now than it was when I was a kid, which I am very excited about. Yeah. And you know that's by design that it's not... Oh pushed but you know we're not gonna get into that it's okay yes that's that's, that's another podcast <laughs> it's by design <laughs> i know all of your your songs and everything are your babies but do you have a favorite and why uh yes so no <laughs> <laughs> i know it's it hard 
it, it depends on what kind of mood I'm in. So like, it's normally the latest song I've done, which mm -hmm. is probably my favorite. So right now it's definitely um a new level of lit because that's just where I'm at right now. Yeah. So that's definitely my favorite. But for a long time, it was who I am because that was like really just my story. Mm -hmm. So who I am was up there for a very long time, which is crazy because it's got a, a very hard sample in there, <laughs> which we talked about the cheat code. Look, you've been but doing it since 2009. You passed the you right, the time, you right. So you good. See, see, I put my dudes in. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, definitely new level of lit because that is where I'm at right now. I'm talking about my journey as a husband and a father, and just um, been a black man in this world and trying to stay positive and being happy with where I'm at right now and embracing that and like that's your lit, but I'm on a whole new level of lit right now. It's something I have just blessed to experience. Yes. Tell so, us like, new level of lit. Definitely my favorite song right now. Tell us, tell us about like, first of all, tell them where they can go see the video and everything. Don't plug it all in now. Real quick. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> new level of lit. It's on um all my socials, which is Anthe MC, or you can watch the video on YouTube that at Anthe MC. And you said that you you were inspired by everything that you're going through and everything that's going on to make that song. So, right. So um, this is crazy because I actually had that song in my head for a couple years now, and I just uh, finally recorded it. So when my wife first got pregnant, that's when that song started. Oh. And I didn't finish it until this year, which was very weird, right? Yeah. So it's, it's a correlation of just the journey from then to now. So more so of our situation, but I just felt like it was a perfect time to be like, even in the midst of this, it's still like a new level of lit. Like, I won't allow that to take away from where I'm at. Yeah, because honestly, look, everything that you took away from 2020 has blessed you already. And the fact that you're still here is already a blessing. But I love, I love that the way that you approach the video, like how it's kind of like, I don't know how to explain it. it it's giving us joy and it's exciting to like the transition and everything. Mm -hmm. So tell me how you came up with the idea for the video. Good question. So being during this quarantine, like I was just been experimenting with stuff. So I finally um, was able to get Final Cut Pro on my Mac and I was just playing around with stuff. So I had a lot of performance shots and I was like, this isn't telling the story I want to tell. Mm -hmm. And being in these time of cell phones, we have so many pictures and videos. And I was like, Oh, I can really paint the picture with this. So I started putting pictures in there and I put videos in there. And then I chopped it up and I went back. I had like four different versions of the video. I was like, this is cool, <laughs> but where are you going? And then I was like, ah, let's start from before we were pregnant. So I started with how we led up to that. And then I ended with where the child is now. So you can see the uh, my daughter being way bigger than she was in those baby pictures at the end. Which is crazy because it's about her being born, but now she's running the house. So. <laughs> yeah, she run the house now. Yeah. <laughs> she got y'all doing everything. <laughs> what? Oh, you thought you was finna go to sleep. Daddy. <laughs> like, girl, come get in this bed. We go we going to sleep. <laughs> We're right. going to sleep. No. No, man. This is the <laughs> wildest child in the world. She'll elbow you, kick you. <laughs> Start on one side of the bed, end up on the other side of the bed. I don't know where she get that from. <laughs> <laughs> Look, they say that your children are carbon copies of you, and everything that you did is time sin. So one of y'all, that's a mama. That's a one mama. of y'all was doing that when y'all was younger. <laughs> that's why I don't have any children. I'm like, look, I'm gonna just help take care of other people's kids because I know I was crazy when I was. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my mom probably was like, love, "How do you?" <laughs> I love being an uncle because you can just give them back, but you ain't getting. This one stay with you. Yeah. I sugar yeah. my sugar my uh, nephews and stuff up and send them home. See? It's <laughs> people like you. People like you. That's who I used to be. <laughs> <laughs> now you paying for it. Mm -hmm. That's so funny. Well, let me... I got three more questions for you. Okay. Uh, how do you define success and happiness? So, that's an excellent question because most people define that by monetary, but I do not. I describe that as like when we first started you, when they asked uh told the story about like what I wanted to be when I grew up yeah and I mark success as I have became those things and still learning more and being better at those things so that is success for me um reaching a goal of being who you wanted to become 
that I feel like I am probably the most successful person I know, even though I ain't close to the most <laughs> wealthiest person I know. Yes, I understand that wholeheartedly. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> yeah. Because it's interesting how people put monetary value on success. And I honestly think it's you getting the idea and you actually starting. For me, that's what mm. success is. Like I'm actually doing it. So I definitely agree with you. That's a really good definition. Getting the idea and then starting it. Yeah, that follow through is important. Yeah. It's a lot of missed yeah. opportunities because people won't start. One of my favorite bars is um, from uh, Lil Wayne. He said, shot ugly, but my arc right. So like, no matter how you <laughs> shoot it, if you follow through with it, you're going to get it in there. Yep. <laughs> follow through is important. Yeah. It absolutely is. Do you think your purpose is a journey or a destination? Absolutely a journey. My purpose is to touch as many people as I can along my journey. My end destination don't got nothing to do with this world, but my journey is all about where I'm at now, where I've been, and where I want to go. Absolutely. So my yes, it's absolutely a journey. That's an easy question. See my <laughs> song I did for uh, Coach K, but yes, <laughs> I'm ready for the journey. Yeah, people love it Definitely too, and they really love that song. I love it That's when I first awesome. heard it too, but I have gotten really, really good feedback. That's about awesome. I love being a part of that. You always got some good ideas. Because <laughs> <laughs> you always going to be in the phone with me. I'm going to be like, oh, let me talk. We going to make it happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And my last question is, if you knew then what you know now, would you change anything? This is my favorite question. And I always feel like it's a tough one because um, I know so much now. And I would do things different if I wanted to, if I was more invested into money. But the fact that I am where I am, I don't think I would change that because I would always feel like the butterfly effect, you change something, you change one little thing and then everything else changes. And I wouldn't end up in the spot that I am now. And I am so happy where I'm at right now. Yeah. So to tell the truth, I don't think I would do nothing different. Like I'm, I'm doing what I want to do and I am where I want to be. Maybe not monetary wise, but everything else is, is perfect. So Absolutely. I will say this to you real quick, Aunt. We may not be where we want to be monetary wise, but the amount mm. of peace Ooh. and joy <laughs> and happiness and happiness yes. that we have, because happiness and joy is different. So Ooh. having those three things, like we know mm. that we're working in purpose. So money is going to come. God is going to attract that to us. We don't have to like extend, overextend ourselves to get that. It's coming. Like, I promise you it's coming. So I just wanted to say that to you because I understand exactly where you are because that's where I am right now too. Yes, man. We in that boat. Yes, sir. I love how you say happiness and joy is different. That's like one of my favorite things from Kurt Frank when he said, I want joy because when you're happy, you got to have something to be happy about. Yep. You don't need nothing for joy. Yeah. Joy is everlasting. So yeah. There you go. Absolutely. That's That's what we got. Yeah. <laughs> well, I thank you so much for your time. I enjoyed this and I will definitely be reaching out, but thank you so much. Oh, thank you for having me. This has been great. <laughs> <laughs> so the wife and the baby, I said hi. Will do. You keep holding it down. Level up. <laughs>